of questions I get, uh, one of the things we make, this happens to be a, an unfinished birdhouse. This is a front for a bluebird house. But how do you do that? Did you cut that out with a laser? A little bird that goes in there, it's proud of the surface by a little bit. No, not done with the laser. What this is, is we cut out the pocket right here on a CNC. And for this uh, demonstration, I'm going to be using the uh, Analux 3018 right here. And then we cut a uh, another piece, in this case, so it would be proud. This is uh, half inch thick cedar, or not cedar, cherry. And then that fits in there absolutely perfect. And it's, a, it's a, just a little decorative thing. You don't have to have that on your birdhouse. The people say, how do you do that? And a lot of people think that I do that on the laser since I have so many lasers. But no, it's done on a CNC. And I'm going to show you a, uh, we're going to use a simple shape. We'll use uh, like a heart. And I'll show you how to get one of those set up. I'll take you on the computer here into uh, easel. We're going to use free software. Everything I'm doing here is going to be free, so there's no charge for anything. If you're just getting started, this will give you a little bit of an idea how to do what's called an inlay. So let's go to the computer. So here we are in easel, and I brought in a shape. It's a, a heart shape. Um, and, okay, where did I get that? Well, so we go here to the Pro Design Library. You can, there's different designs you can bring in, and some of them are free, and the heart happens to be one of them. And that's what I've already brought in here. I just clicked on that and I brought it in. So what I want to do here with my shape, I'm going to make it three inches. So there's my width is three inches, my height will be 2.7. This is just for an example. Now for our first one here, we're going to want to do clear out a pocket, like so. And I'm using, uh, I'm using pine actually here. We get down here to pine. It's in there somewhere. And my thickness is 0.75. And we'll just use 10 by 7. That, that's whatever there. That's fine for what I've got in here. So now we would need to set a depth. So the depth of my plywood insert that I'm going to be putting in there is 0.15 inches. Working in inches here. So now we're going to clear out this pocket. So I'm going to save that G-code. Just like uh, we'll download the G-code. Whoop, I guess i got to take you through another step. Uh, the bit I'm using is an eighth inch double flute straight end mill. If you're trying to use a V-bit, this isn't going to work. You need an end mill for this. And for cut settings, I am going to use the default here. As you can see, it works just fine. My spindle speed will actually be 10,000 because that's all the faster this NLX runs. But we'll leave it at 12,000. It'll be at 100%. Plunge rate, 9 inches a minute. Depth per pass, 0.028. I don't like to take great big bites. It makes too much fuzz on my outside edges. My feed rate is 30 inches a minute. I'm going to leave that as it is. If you went over here to manual, you could change that and increase the feed rate a little bit in the depth per pass, but I'm going to leave it on uh, automatic for their suggested settings. Okay, now, over here to my project, I will download the G-code. So that is the, going to be the G-code for the pocket. Now for the inlay, we're going to make some changes here. First of all, our material is going to change to birch plywood. The thickness is 0.15, but I'm going to put in 0.16 so I get a good through cut. Okay, now we go over here in our cut path. Want to cut uh, outside the shape path. But now I need to make this a little bit smaller. So instead of 3.0 inches here in the width, and make sure your little thing here is locked to keep everything in uh, proportion, we're going to go to 2.9. So I'm going to make it a tenth of an inch smaller. My cut here. 
I'm going to cut 0.16. And the bit's going to stay the same. And for cut settings, we're going to keep everything over there just as it was. Keeping this simple. So now I need to download that G code. Now I haven't titled these, so they're untitled 35 and 36, and I got a bunch of other junk in there I need to clear out. So there's our uh, two files we're going to be using. Here we are in Candle, so I'm going to open up. I got to close out what I got in here first. Oh, there we go. So here we are in Candle. Going to open a file here. So the one we want to clear out that pocket and that pine is what is untitled 35. So there it is right there. So what I need to do now is take this over on the Analex CNC there, get my pine mounted, and I'll show you how I do that. I'm not using hold down clamps, I'm using the uh, painter's tape and glue method. So we'll head over to the CNC here. Okay, for the tape and glue method, and CA glue method, is we just take a few pieces of uh, blue painter's tape, and since I'm not doing a through cut, I don't need to go overboard here. A couple pieces of uh, painter's tape on there, and I have just a scrap of pine here. I'm going to put a couple strips of uh, tape to kind of match. That's got a bad planer snipe in it there. These are scraps. So what I'm going to do here is use some CA glue, and I've got, uh, this is, it doesn't matter what brand you use. It could be Tight Bond, it could be Miter Apple, or whatever you call this. So what I do is I put a uh, squiggle of glue on here, a little squiggle of glue on here. Like I said, we're not doing a cut through. You don't have to get wild with it. Got some activator here, instant bond. This is tight bond. It doesn't match that brand, but they all work the same. Put a little spray on there. Turn this over, line up my tape. Set that down and hold it for a few seconds. Okay, so that's in there good and tight. So now I'm going to jog this to get this down at a reasonable place to work from. Okay, now that I've got to uh, that point, I need to set my Z-probe here and make sure you have your settings all set up in candle ahead of time. I've done some videos on that to get that calibrated. And I need to raise my Z-axis up a bit. There we go. We'll get the probe set under there. I'm going to zero the XY. I'm going to zero the Z, or Z as many people call it. Click on the little icon there and candle to bring that down to get my Z height set. And there we are. Move that off to the side here. And I will send the file from Candle. So there's our first uh, cut there, that's just the pocket. So what I need to do here now is bring this to the front.
And because this is just tape back there, I can lift this up and it comes right off. So this tape on the back, I'll just peel that off and I'll get this set up now for our little piece of plywood we're going to use for the inlay. And since I'm using a slower feed and a slower speed, I still got a few fuzzies there to sand off, but I can knock that off with a piece of fine sandpaper pretty easy. So these little fuzzy things here, you get a little bit around the edges, this being a soft wood. It uh, is very easy to clean up. Here's just a little piece of sandpaper here, and those will come right off. Now I'll get this set up with my uh, piece of plywood. Setup here is basically the same. A couple pieces of tape. Of course, now we're doing a cut. So you want to make sure that you uh, have tape where you're going to be doing the cut, or this piece could go flying because I did not use tabs. If you are using hold downs and you're doing a cut, make sure you include tabs. Of course, the difference, this advantage with tabs is you have to go back and cut them out later. That's why I like using this glue method here. Don't overlap your tape because that makes a hump. Let's get them right, get it right side by side. Again, uh, get some squiggles of glue on here. You don't need to go too crazy. I'll spray my activator on the tape that's on the bottom. I'll set this in place. And I'll just hold it for a few seconds. Gives me time to put the cap back on the glue. Now I'll get the uh, spindle jog back to the front corner and get the other file loaded. Okay, what I want to do now is zero my XY and zero my Z. Get my Z probe here. Set it under here and get things set. And we are set. Now I just need to load that file for the cutout, that's our second file, and send it. Okay, I got the fuzzy sanded off here, so there's our piece we cut out. This would be the inlay. Yeah, a little tiny gap there might have been for my sanding, but otherwise, uh, pretty much perfect inlay. Or I may have this flipped over upside down. It may fit better the other way, but now that I got it down in there, I got to get a knife to get it back out because it's a tight fit. Okay, I had it upside down. This is the, uh, there's the veneer tear outs from that. So I had it upside down before, and it is a very, very tight fit, and I'll show you that here in a minute. Now I'll show you some things you don't want to do, is if you make it, I'm going to use this darker colored one here. If you cut this out exactly the same size as the pocket, it's not going to fit. There's no way that would fit in there. It doesn't matter what you do. You need to make it a I do a tenth of an inch smaller. Now some have said that, well, if I cut on the inside, or I cut on the line, it'll fit better. Well, yeah, it'll fit in there, but you've got a lot of, you've got, then you've got a gap all the way around it. So you don't want to do that. The center, by making it a tenth of an inch smaller, you're going to have a nice, tight fit. Take one here that I've stained. So you can see the contrast a little better. And once you press that in, get all these other things out of the way. You've got a nice flush inlay. No gaps around there, everything comes out really well. 
And I want to point out one other thing here too while I got it kind of closed up here. So there's a scrap of cedar. It's got that bird uh, pocket engraved in it. And I took the same piece of plywood. If you're doing something very small that has detail on it, for instance the beak on this bird, you either you need to use a much smaller bit or you need to make your graphic bigger. Because using an eighth inch bit, as you can see, this isn't going to fit in there because the eighth inch bit cannot do the pocket for this little fine detail right here. I would have to go down to a sixteenth bit or smaller. So there's something to keep in mind when you're trying to do inlays. If you have fine detail, you're going to need a fine bit to go with it. So I hope that answers the questions on how I do these inlays. And as I showed here at the beginning of the video with this uh, birdhouse, actually this is the front of a bird, unfinished birdhouse, we actually put these in and we make them proud. It's a, kind of a decorative thing. But you can also set these up and do things completely flush like this. Uh, again though, you're going to need to uh, get things set up carefully after you cut your pocket and you want to make your inlay, like I said, I make it a tenth of an inch smaller than the pocket. That lets me slip that in there and you, yeah, you're going to have some fuzzies around there depending on what kind of material you're using. You sand that off, it'll fit in there, you get a nice tight fit. And uh, you don't need a great big fancy CNC to do it. Uh, you don't need to spend $5,000 on a CNC to do something like this. Uh, I've got the Analex 3018 right here. No, it doesn't have a huge work area, but it, for things like this it works out really well. And I'll put a link in the description of where to get this. This is not sponsored by any means. I happen to have an Analex 30, 3018 CNC, so I thought I'd break it out and use it. And as you can probably see from the spoil board on it, it's been used quite a bit. Uh, I don't use clamps. I use the glue method for most of these things, the tape and the glue method. It, it just works out better for me. Uh, on my big CNC, yes, I use the clamps. But on these smaller ones, tape and glue works just perfect. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. I'm Roger in the shop. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.